Hello everybody, I am Apogee and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution in our 1993 Jurassic Park build. I think we have a spy. You see him? This guy in the very far back behind that lady who's... I don't even know what she's doing. Yeah, I think he's a spy for Biosyn. He's trying to figure things out. I don't trust him. I don't trust him in the least. Just look at how gorgeous this is, by the way. Can we just take a second to really, like, breathe in how beautiful this is? The safari lodges and everything? This is incredible. Anyway, so welcome back to the 1993 build, where I think... Where did we leave off? So, yeah, fun fact for you guys about the... Whoa, that was super amazing. Fun fact for you guys in the last video, where we left off wasn't exactly where I meant for the video to leave off. There was actually like an additional five minutes to that video, maybe, uh, where we actually, because let me think, we built the tour, we did all that, we got the perimeter fences, there was an additional few minutes there where what I did is that I built like the incubation area, or hatchery area, uh, in like a really isolated area, which I'm about to show you guys, and we went ahead and we started making like some triceratops and a few other things like that. Well, not really, that, that's, that about sums it up, a few triceratops, uh, but I remember distinctly, like, right in there, for some reason, the video started lagging pretty bad. And it apparently translated into the recording, so those last few minutes was, like, really jinky as absolute hell in the video. So I went ahead and decided to skip it for you guys, because I felt like it was kind of useless to watch. Uh, outside of that, though, it's not like I've... What the crap? Oh, they're going through the gate. Uh, I, it's not really like I've done, like, a terrible amount more, like... That, that, that's pretty much what sums it up. So back over here, let's see. Let's go on the map. We have, as you guys can see, the main enclosure. The tour is en route. We have all of our great big and beautiful enclosures. But down here is where I built the hatchery. Just off from the arrival pad, as you guys can see here, the little path goes this way. We've got our geothermal plant. We've got the little power storm defense. And right behind it is the hatchery. Now, I already made a few Triceratops with the stuff, but they came out and their skins were a little bit odd looking and I just, I couldn't figure out which one I liked. So I went ahead and sold the ones that I didn't like and I also kind of felt like I wanted you guys to be part of what would be officially the first dinosaur of the park. So I just went ahead and made a new little batch right here real quick and you guys are gonna be here to see us release our first dinosaurs. True to the lore of Jurassic Park, I do believe the Triceratops was the very first successful dinosaurs that InGen was able to release. But before we actually release them, and I think we do want like five or six of them, uh, again, I should probably do my research, how many of them were there? Because in the movie, we only saw one, of course. And then like in Jurassic Park the game, you see like two or three, I think. So I wonder, like, I probably should like Google the lore real quick, maybe off camera or something, just like see how many dinosaurs or how many uh, Triceratops are actually in the park. But either way, we're going over here, because over here is the Triceratops enclosure. Now, I don't entirely know what to do with this. What we do know about the Triceratops enclosure is, like, after the Dilophosaurus and that kind of stuff, I think, yeah, look at that. Even though the tour is technically going the wrong way, I'm trying to set it up so it looks like it's going the right way. So it's kind of like, as soon as they come through this gate, they see the Triceratops sign, and they're like, oh, well, this is going to be Triceratops enclosure. Even though in the reality of the game, the vehicles are actually coming from this direction and going through here. It's also not quite as smooth as I would like to be, so we have to change that real quick. So let's get in here. We're going to start by flattening out a few things. So as soon as they come in, it's like really, really hilly right here. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm actually going to bring this back a little bit so that it sort of rises right here. Continues on back this way. Just make this all nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. And continues that way to about here, where I could probably drop down. Let's not make that look too weird, though. This can come off this way a little bit. That should be pretty good. Yeah. And then I think inside of this enclosure, this guy right here is where the Triceratops and stuff is going. I think what we're going to do is we're going to lower it down. We're going to make it kind of uh, an embankment, because I think we see that in the movie when, like, Dr. Grant and all of them are looking out into the enclosure. For one, there's really... Is there even a fence in that scene? 
Which is what's weird, is like, there's no fence. Technically, no, if you guys really think about it, we could get away without a fence right here. Like, I mean, I would kind of prefer to have the fence, just because, I mean, that seems pretty accurate, but if we look on the map, what the? This no, I don't provided. want a Chasmosaurus. If we look on the map, this entire area is already enclosed, and the Metriacanthosaurus is going to get its own deal right over here. So, should we just try it? Like, the Triceratops is going to attack the vehicle and stuff, though, right? Hmm. You know what? Screw it, guys. We're going to try it. We're going to try this little enclosure here. <laughs> Probably a horrible idea. Without a fence. Just to see what it's like. Because in the movie, legitimately, I don't think there's a fence at all. There's like, if there is, it's like a really light mesh, like cow fence or something, which is really weird to think, but eh, we'll try it. So we'll try that. I think it'll still be sort of like a low spot right in here, because that's how it kind of looked in the movie. Can continue back that way a little bit, make this a little bit bigger. All right, continue your flatness back this way, and then I think... I'd be fine with the right about here it ending and starting to like slope uphill because something I also I feel like back in the Dilophosaurus enclosure it's going to take like a bit for me to get all of this worked out but what I do know is that this is our Triceratops enclosure back over here is Dilophosaurus Metricanthosaurus is something we never really saw in the movie but supposedly it's like right here Metricanthosaurus and T-Rex and all of these guys actually have very mountainous enclosures which is very strange so I got to build up like a bit of a hill on the Metricanthosaurus enclosure, and when we when we come in for the Tyrannosaur enclosure here, it's really strange because, like obviously, like we see in the movie, there's the path the uh, the path that kind of makes this really light bend this way, and then we've got the fence that curves around right next to it. But actually, like as soon as we look into the enclosure, just like in the movie, we get that kind of like a mountain range look. Like it's just it's a big mountain right here. So I think what we're going to end up doing is that we're going to end up building like a big huge hill or a mountain right in here to try to replicate that scene. And it's going to have to like sort of peter off and go this way and stuff like that. And then somewhere in there there's also like the drop off for uh, when Dr. Grant and all of them are getting like pushed over that cliff in the vehicle and stuff. What for, Somewhere in there there's, this, like, there's like a drop off. So uh, I don't know like it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a minute of planning. I have a pretty good plan, and I've been doing a lot of trial testing in my own time. But I think we can make this work. So, you know what? We're actually going to just go ahead and drag this on. Like, all the way through here, maybe? Until about there, perhaps? Just sort of make it nice and gentle. Nice, gentle slope. That's pretty good, right? Do something like that. And then bring it back over here, because, like you guys just saw, this is all doing its own thing. This is actually still all a little bit higher than the rest of the enclosure, so we're actually just going to go ahead and continue this. Give a slightly more drastic effect for the Metriacanthosaurus enclosure, too. That's my goal for this episode, is to get, like, all of these northernmost dinosaurs in the game. Triceratops, Dilophosaurus, and Metriacanthosaurus. Maybe all in the same episode get all of them done. Speaking of which, I forgot... I'm on Discord, okay. Uh, I forgot to put on my stopwatch, so I've already been in here like, I don't know, like eight, almost ten minutes maybe? So, uh, we're already... The, the, the clock is ticking. We're running out of time. Okay. So right about there. Smooth that out a little bit. Make that look beautiful. Look as beautiful as possible. Beautify it. Same here, just give it a little quick smooth. That should be okay to get a quick smooth. Quick smooth. Right here, definitely a quick smooth. Uh, I think actually let's delete this guy if I can grab it. There we go. And we're going to push it back a little bit farther. Triceratops. Triceratops. And one sick triceratops. You're going to go right here. Perfect. Now, again, not completely sure how this is set up according to the uh, the movie, but assuming like again we're thinking on the on the basis that the 
Ford Explorers are coming from the other direction, not the way they're going currently. So, kind of sucks that I've got to have the vehicles going that way. I can't think of another good way to do that. Uh, but for the sake of trying to be screen accurate and stuff, we're just going to pretend they're coming this way. There goes some Dilophosaurus. Yay! Uh, Dilophosaurus. Dimorphodons. So, we're going to build up a little bit of, uh, a little bit of stuff and things here. What I remember from the movie... Again, I'm using uh, the particular recording software I'm using makes it so that you guys can't really see anything like if I go off screen to look at stuff, so hmm. you guys wouldn't really be able to see what I got going on. You know what? I'm going to do it, though. I'm going to tab out. Hopefully you guys can still hear me and my recording software doesn't freak out, but I'm tabbing out, going to the Google, and I'm going to look up a couple of pictures of the Triceratops enclosure as we see in the movie. Okay, so that's that's one picture. It kind of shows that there's a bit of a hill. The entire enclosure is like really ratty looking. Like, like I said, there's really like almost no sign of a fence. It just immediately is like a small embankment that goes down into a really flat, like little like grassy area. You can see the jeep and the triceratops like sitting out in the middle of it all. And then in the far back, there's like a big hill or ridge, uh, and there's a lot of trees and stuff. If I remember to, I'll put a picture for you guys. I should probably, like, download this picture real quick so you guys can have it. Okay, then. Well, screw that. Okay, we're back. Uh, so let's see. What I am seeing is that there is actually this really big, like, sort of hilly embankment in the back of the enclosure. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to sort of follow along the fence here and make a nice big hill. Sort of counterproduce what we just did counterproduce, counteract what we just did, whatever you want to say. Because it pretty much just starts doing this. Like, it's just, it's a big old hill. Big old hill. We could probably even, like, make it a bit more naturalistic and merge out this way a little bit. Again, this whole area is incredibly flat. Let's get that as close as possible to the road without actually tearing down the road. Let's go to about there. And then this can, of course, continue on back this way a little bit more. Out here, push back against that hill I just made a little bit. Come on. I like that. Smooth out that fence, because that looks like garbage. Okay. And then, of course, what we actually see in the movie is, like, there's, there's no fence visible back there. This is all just, like, really heavily forested back here. I'm gonna build up a nice big forest, bring it back this way, merge it around here, sort of follow along the, the edge of the enclosure here a little bit. Now I don't think you should really even be able to see the Tyrannosaur enclosure or anything. Okay, that's not really as thick as it should be. Build that up. Uh, we could probably eliminate a few trees right here, actually. Get rid of that palm. We don't need palms. And how does that look? For, like, a, a good start. Because, like, you're from the road right here. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. No, I don't think that's bad at all. Okay. So, the other thing is that this entire enclosure looks really, like, dirty. Like, it's a really dirty enclosure. Like, there's mud everywhere, so... We're gonna... We're gonna enlighten that experience. There's gonna be a lot of dirt sort of coming off the... Sloping off the edge of this embankment here. Sloping off the edge of the embankments back here. Uh, the entire enclosure just got, like, this really patchy, dirty look to it. And then that actually happens to be a perfect spot right here to be like the uh, where the Triceratops lays down. And back over here, I think I was doing some testing and I found, cause let me see, grassland, uh, maybe back over here, let's test it. Yeah, grassland just gives us grass and a lot of like really big like taro plants or something. Coastal gives us little like patches of pretty flowers that sort of look like lavender or something. 
Crag, however, gives us far more like weedy looking plants that are kind of brownish black and kind of look like the West Indian lilac, funny enough. So we're going to go with that. Get all that nice and weedy and garbagey looking. Sort of merge it back this way, merge it back this way. Uh, sort of leave this little bit of exposure going on, kind of like it's a little path going over here. And just make something that kind of looks like a, you know, like the little patch where the Triceratops was. And then go through here and just do a bunch of patches of crag and grossness. Because that's pretty much how the enclosure looked. That's pretty good, actually. Alright, bring that in just a little bit. It wasn't quite that patchy. This West Indian lilac? Okay. There's also a lot of bushes, like, right up here next to the road. So we're gonna get a little bit right in here. A little bit right up in here. Let's just get a few random patches, make it look a little bit more bushy. Bushes in there, bushes in there. And then something we're gonna have to make sure that the animals have as counter uh, counterintuitive. Why is that a word I keep going for? Uh, as much as like we don't really see it in the movie, I'm just gonna go ahead and like place like a pond, maybe a creek, back this way a little bit. We could just do something like that. Something that just gives them a little water source, but doesn't take away from the atmosphere by much. Make sure we get plenty of accents and dirt through here. As we certainly had it. Ooh, yeah, right here. Ah, no. Yeah, yeah. Give it a nice, dirty aesthetic. This is gorgeous. What do you guys think? I'm into it. This is like our little patch where the Triceratops would be laying down. It's sadly not quite as expansive as it looks in the in the movie, but there's only I only have so much space to work with here. But yeah, like I mean, the vehicle's coming through. That's a pretty good jaunt over to where like the Triceratops would be falling over. The other thing is, of course, we have scenery, so we can do little stuff to make it, you know, look like it's a little bit more engrossed in jungle. So, like, I could stick this guy right here, sort of make the jungle stick out a little bit more. Uh, I got this guy, which is actually a log. Not that I really need the log, but for, just for fun, we could do like that. That's actually pretty cool. I'm into that. Uh, we got these guys. I could always stick one of you guys, like, off over here. Keep it tropical. And here's the best part. That's one big pile of crap. We got the... Oh, uh, well, I can't use that one. We have the rocks that just happen to kind of look like the pile of crap that we need. I ain't gonna actually say we... I'm a Dr. Malcolm, so I can just, 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 A little bit nasty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's have some fun with it. Beautiful. There we go. The Triceratops enclosure. Dun, 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 dun. And with that, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and release our... Whoops. Our humble Triceratops. Now, I got skin patterns. Again, we are playing modded Triceratops modded triceratops modded jurassic world evolution here so i think a lot of the dinosaurs especially the ones that we see in the very first movies i think most of the movie dinosaurs that we actually see in the movies from this particular mod i'm using makes them look more screen accurate is the idea so like i know dilophosaurus looks a lot different the t-rex is supposed to have a slightly wider better looking head triceratops i think is a little bit different but i think it's something more to do with texture rather than actual appearance uh, 
I know Ceratosaurus looks completely different. Uh, I'm trying to... I think Gallimimus has a new skin. The Parasaurs you guys are going to love. The Parasaurs look great. Uh, I think Mementiosaurus has got a different, like, proportioning. There's, there's a lot of really cool stuff in this mod. But regardless, I'm using 1993 pattern D, B, and C. C is the one I think looks a little bit dirtier, so that's going to be our stand-in for the sick Triceratops. Uh, B just kind of looks like a grayish... Well, why am I why am I talking about it? Just let's, let's just show you guys. Alright, so the first dinosaur in the park. Technically, actually number six. Okay, so this one's not... Is this the right one? I guess it's just got like a really naturalistic look to it. I kind of like it. Pretty cool. We are to welcome a to the park. And then this next one should be the one that's just kind of like a really standard grayish color. Just kind of looks like a rhino. Yeah. Yeah, this one looks really good. You know what? Ooh. Something I need to try now that I think about it. Because the Triceratops does get modified in this mod, it just occurred to me, I wonder if the null, like, nine, or the generic 1993 skin is maybe the one that actually gets affected to look just like the one from the movie, the one that was sick. I wonder now. I guess we'll see. And I think four Triceratops is a good one. If not, then this one is our stand-in sick Triceratops, because it's at least got some brown on it. Interesting. All right, let's go ahead and start getting these guys going. Shoot a couple of flares in here to try to keep them at bay. I don't know if that really does anything. I'm trying to figure it out, but whatever. And then the other vehicle can come in here and trank these guys. And then our next enclosure is going to be the Dilophosaurus. Well, I guess since we're right in the area, we might as well work on Metricanthosaurus. There's Parasaurus right there, guys. Let's actually, let's scroll through here. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see. And Kylosaurus, I think, gets a new skin because of this mod, because the uh, the one, the original, like, this whole, like, 1990, or Return to Jurassic Park stuff makes the Ankylosaurus look a little bit odd. This mod is supposed to kind of improve that. Uh, the Baryonyx, I think that's not actually right. I actually put in a separate mod for Baryonyx that makes it look more like the Jurassic World Baryonyx, just because whatever this mod was going for for Baryonyx looks really weird as indicated in that picture. The Ceratosaurus looks great. Uh, Creethosaurus has a bit of a, a skin upgrade. Dilophosaurus actually looks really good. The only thing I've uh, got a problem with from this mod is that the Dilophosaurus doesn't have its overbiting teeth, which it's supposed to have, but this mod developer apparently kind of overlooked that. Otherwise, like the Dilophosaurus looks perfect. Uh, Galleys have got a new skin. Hararosaurus looks like the one from Jurassic Park the game. I'm excited for that. Metricanthosaurus, I think, has a bit of a upgrade to its skin, but I don't really know what. Parasaurs have got the one that actually makes them look like the Parasaurs from the first movie, where they're actually, like, green and stuff. Proceratosaurus has a bit of a different model, actually. Like, it's a bit more bulked out and cooler looking, which I love. Uh, Spinosaurus, I think, gets a bit of a, a, bit of a buff in its appearance. Uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex has got a buff. The Troodon looks like the Troodon, or I think a couple of its skins makes it look like the Troodon from Jurassic Park the game, which I am again very excited for. Uh, Velociraptors, I think all the mod does is that the 93 Raptors just got like more snake-like eyes, like they're a little bit more evil looking. And then the Triceratops, as we established, has a bit more of a buff to it. So let's go ahead and release this guy. I wonder, does the mod do what I think it does? No, okay, I was wondering if the mod maybe made the regular skin look actually like the sick triceratops that's like all brown and well essentially covered in dirt but i don't think it does this guy's trying to fire a flare but since you're here what you're going to actually do is not do that you're just going to trank him let's go ahead and move over the the, the triceratops right i don't know how this is going to go here just because uh I'm pretty positive the Triceratops are going to attack the vehicles, and I'm just going to end up having to put that fence back. But if I can get away with this enclosure not having, not having 
the fences, that would look cool. Uh, obviously, they need food, so... I got infinite feeders. Something I'd like to do, maybe after this first initial episode of actually releasing the dinosaurs and stuff, I think the, uh, the next episode I'll go ahead and turn on limited profit or something. Like, we'll have, like... I, wow, what would the game do? I think it would give us, like, $3 million or so. And then we might have to actually open the park and start making some money. But then again, I don't know that we want to do that. Should we just, like, build the park and just forget about it? Maybe. I don't know. Well, there's some food. Right now, we are using infinite uh, feeders, so we don't have to worry about that. Put this, like, every ten minutes, I feel like, is all we really need. And this should be pretty beautiful. All right. So the Triceratops is going to come in. Hopefully that'll all be fine and dandy. Next one I guess we'll work on is Dilophosaurus. As we already know with the Dilophosaurus, it gets this really light cable fence. Nothing major. Let's maybe start from this side. So it just kind of comes right in here. I don't think the fence came terribly close to the road, so we're gonna keep it from doing that. And it's gonna come off like right here, and it's gonna have to curve into the fence like that. Cool. So, let me see, I'm trying to remember. What I do remember from the movie is that we can eliminate all these trees right here real quick, just so I can see the more these up. Let's just delete all of this real quick so I can see what's going on. Look at all the Dimorphodons. They're going everywhere. Ah! An infestation. I don't know why I added the mod. I just thought it was cool. I mean, seriously, just look at them. The Dimorphodons. I love them so much. Okay. So, something I immediately imagine with the Dilophosaurus enclosure is that it's kind of like really swampy and horrible looking. Well, not really swampy, but kind of like deep jungle. Accomplish that real quick. You know what, actually, again, let's let's go take a look at a, look at a, a picture right quick. Whoa. No, I don't want to. Might go take a look at a picture and all that stuff, but first off, let's enjoy the Triceratops while I'm while I'm doing this. You guys can sit here and just enjoy the the majesty of the Triceratops for just a second while I go look for a picture of the Dilophosaurus paddock. Dilophosaurus in enclosure. Here we go. Take a quick look. Okay, so yeah, this I do remember is obviously like they're driving by and you can actually see the sign. That's like a very distinct image that's always in my head when I think of that. Oh, that would have been helpful earlier. Here's a picture actually of them looking into the Triceratops enclosure. And there is a, okay, there is kind of a fence, but like I said earlier, it's legitimately like a regular barbed wire fence that you would see for like a cow pasture, which is so weird. Okay, here's a picture looking into the enclosure. Alright, so it's it's relatively flat. It's not very deep, though. It's got a lot of, like, these little red flowers, which I remember distinctly as well. And there's a few trees and some shrubbery and stuff, but it's not, like, just totally heavily forested. It's just kind of odd-looking. Interesting. Alright, well, we're back. So back to the, the La Fasaurus enclosure. So what I am saying is that the, like, actual initial look into the enclosure, it is actually very flat. So, what we're going to do is that we're just going to back this up through here and make it nice and flat right through here. Make this a little bit bigger to make things easier. And we're just going to back it all the way up and make it nice and flat. And then smooth that back out. And then something I always felt like for the Dilophosaurs is that they've always deserved like a really creepy looking enclosure. I don't know why that's the first thing that I say when it comes to that, but doesn't the Dilophosaurus just strike you as like a really 
creepy, insane creature that would uh, have like really dark and scary enclosures. I guess just because of the movie. Yeah, I'm into that. I like that. A little bit of smoothing right through here, a little bit of smoothing right through here. Give it a slightly rougher. This kind of looks like collision course all of a sudden. Beautiful. And then of course we'll give them like some water right back in here. It'll probably be perfect. If I can game. Okay, here we go. And then something that the Dilophosaurus actually had that we never saw in the movie, but is like genuine canon in the book, I suppose, is that there was like a big roaring river coming through the uh enclosure which I guess we might as well sort of like pay tribute to right here I feel like that's pretty cool and we'll give them a bunch of a bunch of dirt this dirt looks great make like a little path going up through here a little path going up through here do a bunch with stone and stuff. The stone looks amazing. Maybe even like little patches of sand right here along the water. Cool. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is of course build up a like, nice big wall big wall of trees because that's just for whatever reason you ever question that really like in Jurassic Park like okay we have all these dinosaurs and we want people to be able to see them but you don't take the moment to like you spend all this money on the fences and stuff but you won't take a minute to like clear out the trees so people can actually see the dinosaurs really jerks let's build that up nice and heavy give it a nice heavy forested appearance here Make it so, like, you're not actually going to see through it. Like that. Because, I mean, in the in the movie, again, like, if you look at some of these images that I'm looking at, actually, like, you can kind of see through, like, it's not really heavy jungle. Like, you can kind of peek through it. And it looks like there's, like, a little bit of field and some other stuff right behind it. But for the most part, it's a really, like, heavily forested spot. So we're going to do that, we're going to ride along the ridge here with some trees, build it up pretty heavy right up here, get the same kind of portrayal going on here, then this will add to the Triceratops perspective I hope as well. And then I think just like bring this over, this over. Give it kind of a, a jungle atmosphere going on. If I can get a singular tree right there, that'd be cool. Or we can do that as well. into this so now the next thing would be vibrant because what I have in mind here is that obviously they go along the fence and stuff and what I just mentioned a second ago about like the like the berries or whatever we do that here we use the vibrant option and the uh, the landscaping here and we just run it along the fence and hopefully get some like nicely colored flowers and stuff just to bring out that same kind of aesthetic and it looks like we are most certainly getting that. Right? I think I even saw, like, there is. There's, like, yeah, look at that. There's, like, little red bushes. What the? I All right, fine. That's Leave me alone. Giving this contract to you. Good. Yeah, there is, actually, like, these little red flower bushes through here. So there we go. We get just a little bit of that same aesthetic right through here. 
So this is like the only like proper straightaway right through here. Well, it's not even a straightaway. This entire thing is very slightly bent, but that's kind of how it looks in the movie, I think. This is kind of a straightaway. Pretty good. So what I do know is somewhere in here, I always, for some reason, remember in the movie that like the, the little angle that we get from the... Again, I'll probably pop up an image so you guys can see this, but the vehicles are coming through here and then there is, they pass by the sign, but for some reason I always distinctly remember that the sign is kind of down in embankment a little bit, sort of off to the side very slightly, and then it kind of like pans over to the vehicles. It's not really from these pictures I'm seeing. It's far more flatter through here. And it kind of maintains a good flatness like that through here for a little bit. And the vehicles actually pass really close to the sign. So let's get it. Dilophosaurus. Put Dilophosaurus sign like right about here. It's not over by much. It's just like right here-ish. And there's actually like a little palm tree like right next to it, which just happens to be the frontier provided us with sort of a perfect little setup here to do that. So we do like that. And we can do like that. And there you go, we kind of get like a little aesthetic to do that. I'm using the word aesthetic a little too much. I can just do like one of those just for fun. And we can make this look a little bit more forested and grassy because that's kind of how it looks again as well. They don't maintain the jungle that well, do they? And there we go, Dilophosaurus. I'm into that. I'm in, I'm into that. That's a pretty cool looking enclosure. I mean, again, like the whole point is like we're just trying to make something that looks more screen accurate, but outside of that, we've got a pretty big enclosure here with nothing really to go off of for how it would have looked inside of it. So, why not just use our imagination a little bit and produce something that looks cool, especially aesthetically pleasing from a uh, from a higher up god view like we're pretty much always going to have in this game. Now, how's this working for everybody? Are the dinosaurs just destroying the vehicles, or what's going on? No? Triceratops are actually pretty at peace with the, uh, the Ford Explorers coming through here. Well, I, I'm cool. I'm into that. Alright, which one of these guys is the dirty boy? The one that I'm gonna call the sick one because it's kind of brownish. I think it's you. That being the case, you get the honorary title. Sick Triceratops. Or wait a minute. What was the name of the Triceratops? Yeah, okay, wait a minute. I have a better idea. Sarah. Yeah! Because uh, I think for any of you guys that really like get the reference there, from the Lego Jurassic World game, Gary Harding, like in the game, said something like to the Triceratops, like, whoa, Sarah. Sorry, I. My, my daughter would kill me if she found out that I called one of the Triceratops after her or something like that. Sort of implying that Sarah Harding from the second movie like is his daughter or something. Which is kind of bogus, but at the same time it's just it's a cool little reference. I don't know, I'm into that. Or you could go back to Jurassic Park the game and see that uh, his daughter was actually like a 13 year old or something. I don't know. So that's Sarah, and then we could go over here to the one that's apparently the Alpha, and again, reference to Jurassic Park the game, Lady Margaret. I don't know if that's how you spell Margaret, but we're going to live with that. There we go. Actually, is it Lady Margaret two, like two R's or something? Two T's maybe? I don't remember. You guys leave a comment or something. I'm not going to look it up. So there we go, we have our Triceratops herd. Let's go get Dilophosaurus real quick. And I'm running a little low on time here. I think I'll just leave it off with the, uh, I don't know. I really wanted to try to get everybody in here as well. Like I want to try to get Metrocanthosaurus as well, but these enclosures take some time to build. I don't know. Uh, we're just gonna leave it as it's null skin because I don't feel like it really needs anything better. Ah, uh, Dilophosaurus. I it it always struck me as 
kind of being more of like a gross creature because of like the whole poison, like being able to spit venom and stuff. So I always put intensive repair on Dilophosaurus. I don't know why. I just think it kind of makes it look cool. Uh, or just sounds cool. I feel like it's a fairly strong creature, so we'll go muscle fibers. Tooth hardness makes sense. Uh, it's got a really like heavily forested enclosure, so I'm gonna make it like into a real forest-loving creature. Uh, I have no reason to really do that. Uh, let's give it some immune response so that it doesn't just get sick on me all the time. Uh, it can do social of 1 to 12, that's fine. And I feel like it would have pretty good reaction speed or aggressive instincts. Aggressive instincts because it's a carnivore, reaction speed because it's got to be able to spit venom as accurate as it can. So let's go with that. And again, I should probably look up the lore about how many of these dinosaurs were known to be in the park. I think in the book they said there was like seven Dilophosaurs, so there was, I mean, there was a lot of them, but is it really worth actually making a bunch of, Dilo like, that many Dilophosaurs? I don't know, really. I don't really know. Ooh, uh, actually, before we leave off the episode, something I should have shown you guys, like, I, I did the hatchery and stuff, but I actually totally forgot to show you guys that I did some other little detailed stuff off camera, is that I built, like, the little side trail that they would have taken at the beginning of the movie, we got a sign pointing to where the, the visitor center is off that way. But then right here, we've got a kind of a dirt path that goes off to the right, kind of goes through here. And just really nicely heads off this way. It has like the sort of like the dirt embankment and goes through the double fence into the main enclosure where I have also pretty much built the whole scene that we, we wanted. Looks pretty good though, right? I think it looks pretty good. I feel like it's a little too grassy. I should probably come through here and clear a lot of this out, but it's got the, the main aesthetic that I think we need. We've got our whole, like, little, like, looping, uh, whatever kind of weird shape, <laughs> whatever kind of a weird shape the main lake is here. Uh, like, the little, whatever, like, shoreline? Like, what, whatever this little weird thing is here that the parasaurs, for some reason, line up next to. Uh, again, I'm using the mod that turns this particular log into, or, what is it? This particular tree right here into this log. I should probably just delete that because I'm having to use the other trees to make this scene, and it doesn't quite look the same. So, something up, yeah, I'll, I'll probably just go ahead and, like, get rid of that mod so that we can, uh, change this up a little bit, because I'm not satisfied with how that looks. Like, I mean, it, it looks okay, like, I can deal with this being the tree right here but these two trees need to be this guy right here tree two it would just look so much better and then i should probably clear out a lot of the shrubbery and stuff because the whole scene is not that like dense or anything like it's a really it's really not that grassy of an area which is kind of funny and here's dilophosaurus <laughs> As you guys can see, it, the, the mod kind of narrows out its head a little bit. Yeah. This is something like I just felt like was kind of missing from the, the base game of Jurassic World Evolution here. Like, for whatever reason, they couldn't seem to get it right. Like, I don't know what they were missing about the Dilophosaurus. Like, I'd have to look at the regular model again, but I'm pretty sure it had like a really fat head. And its actual crest wasn't quite as exaggerated as it should have been. This one actually makes the whole Dilophosaurus a little bit more slender, makes its head a little bit thinner, makes that crest a little bit larger. My only pet peeve with it would simply be I've that it's not overbiting its teeth. It doesn't have like the overlaying space. teeth on top. But me? And with that, I think I'm going to call it an episode. I've been at this for a little while. I've got a little bit of like, like just searching around on, on the internet and stuff, like just trying to find a few reference pictures uh, that I need to delete out. But... I, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with this. So far in this particular one, I got to show you guys a little bit that you missed out on uh, that I did like off camera and stuff. We successfully, uh, apparently, very successfully, have a little Triceratops enclosure here that, to me, seems pretty accurate to the movie from what I can see here. It's not as spacious as it appears in the movie, but I don't feel like we could really achieve that with what I've got to work with. Uh, it's apparently very successful in the Triceratops being 
completely interactive with the Ford Explorers. No need for a fence or anything, which I was not expecting. Uh, and we have a Dilophosaurus enclosure here that from the front looks like the movie, from what I can tell, which I think is awesome. Uh, but then actually inside of it, it's like a huge, beautiful enclosure, which is just something we had some fun with. So you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm really into this. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe, hit the like button, do all that kind of amazing stuff. If you guys have any reason to think that I'm doing something wrong here or that you guys want to see something a little bit more accurate, all that kind of good stuff, leave a comment in the down there. I'll also have a link to the Discord so you guys can come over and do some more discussion there if you so choose. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!